I'm Laura with Ian Taylor Trekking and today I'm going to talk to you about packing for our traditional four-day Inca Trail trek to Machu Picchu. Um, I'm going to be, generally the best time to go on the Inca Trail is any time really from April to through October. You can trek the Inca Trail any time of the year, um, just in terms of, of weather, the most stable time is usually April through October. Um, so this is what I would bring on a trip throughout that period. Obviously, it's not a one-size-fits-all. If you're going outside of those dates or, um, you know, if you're going with someone else, they have different requirements. So this is what we would recommend you to bring. Um, we also allow our clients to bring 10 kilos um, in their duffel bag. Uh, porters will carry that up throughout the trek. Not all operations are going to be that way, um, so you definitely need to check with your own. Some, will ha you'll be carrying all your own gear. Um, but ours allow 10 kilos to carry. So I'm going to start out with our duffel bag here. Um, this one's a 100 liter duffel bag, which is quite large for the Inca Trail. Um, however, it works for Kilimanjaro and Everest Base Camps and other trips that we're doing, so I want to use what I already have. Um, so this is going to work just fine for this trip. Um, then I have my day pack. Um, this one is a 46 liter pack. Um, and it is again possibly a little bit large for the Inca Trail, but it's a great pack that I use for all of my hiking trips. Uh, the main thing to think about is that it's got a good waist strap so that you're carrying all of the weight that you have on your backpack each day on your hips so that your legs are taking um, the brunt of the weight because they are going to be the strongest part of your body. You don't want it to all be resting on your shoulders. So this bag does a really great job for me. Um, so to start, I'm going to have my sleeping bag. This one um, is actually rated to uh, minus 10 Celsius, um, which is definitely a little bit overkill, again, for the Inca Trail, because um, temperatures generally are not going to get that cold, uh, even in the evenings. However, again, it's what I have. It's a great bag, so I'm going to use it for this trip. I would say, um, you know, really having, having anything from a zero to minus 10 Celsius sleeping bag on the Inca Trail during this time of year is going to be just fine. So that's going to go in my duffel bag for the porters to take. Um, then I have a Thermarest sleeping mat. Um, you know, in terms of how comfortable you are with camping, this one is just a, a, a two inch Thermarest. It's a very lightweight one. It's good for, you know, backpacking and things. If you aren't as comfortable camping um, outdoors, you might want something with a little bit more thickness to it when it's inflated, maybe up to three inches. Um, but anything from two to three is going to be just fine. So my Thermarest is going to go in my duffel bag as well. Um, next thing is my boots for the trip. Um, these are my trekking boots that I'll be using. They're a La Sportiva um, trekking boot. I prefer something that um, has a bit of rigid sole to it so it doesn't have too much flex. Um, so these are, are a great option. They're also Gore-Tex, which means um, you know they're going to be waterproof. You're not going to have water getting into your boots, especially if you're going in a rainier time of the year. So these are going to be a great boot. I would be wearing these, so these wouldn't be in my duffel bag, so I'll just put these over here. So I'll be wearing those every day. Um, I'll also bring some sort of lightweight runner um, or tennis shoe, whatever you have. It's nothing you need to go out and buy specific. Um, just something to be comfortable in when you get back into the camp each day because taking off your trekking boots at the end of a, a long day is always the best part of the day. <laughs> so these will go in here. Um, let's see, next um, I'll start with my rain gear. Now rain gear on the Inca Trail is quite important. Um, you know, those times from April to October are generally the driest months. However, you know, you can have rain any day, any time on the Inca Trail. Um, so having good rain gear is essential. So I have um, a great pair of waterproof pants that can fit over my trekking pants. So these are actually always going to be in my duffel bag, or sorry, in my backpack that I'm carrying with me at all times. So I will go ahead and put those in there. And along with that, I'm going to have a good Gore-Tex or similar rain jacket. Um, just anything that is 100% waterproof. Some people on the Inca Trail like to get something like a poncho that's going to cover their body and their backpack as well. That generally works. You don't necessarily have to go out and spend a ton of money on your rain gear. Just make sure that you've tested it and it will keep you dry um, if conditions start to worsen out there. Um, it's not fun to be wet. 
um, you tend to get cold and it's and it's just a, it's it's just not as much fun if that happens so um, your rain gear always in your backpack super important um, another thing with my with my backpack here um, it this one does come with a rain cover in it it's actually um, built into the bag here so this is another very important piece of piece of gear to have it's just a cover to go over your backpack um, if you are out hiking and the rain starts most people carry their passports their wallets their phones things like that in their day pack and you definitely don't want those things getting wet um, so it's great to have one of those rain covers in there as well so that's that next what I'm gonna have I'll start with the warmest move my way down so I have a down coat here this is this is actually a pretty lightweight one. Like I said, we're going in, I'm going, getting ready to go in July. Um, so, you know, this isn't a super heavy down jacket. It is an 800 fill goose down. It does have thinner baffling. You don't necessarily need a very heavy down jacket. This one will be just fine if I, um, if I kind of layer it with my merino wool as well as fleece layers. This should be just perfect. So my down jacket is gonna go in my duffel bag. Next, I have a fleece layer. Um, the fleece layer, this can be really anything. Um, this, I have a, a Patagonia R2 that I like to bring. And, you know, just a warm mid-layer that you can fit over your base layers, underneath your down coat when it does get cold. I also will carry this with me every day on the trail, just in case the temperatures drop and, I, and it starts getting cold. This will always be in my day pack. All right. So then um, I bring with me one pair of kind of, these are a fleece pant, you could bring a trekking or a, um, a tracksuit pant, whatever you're comfortable with, just something to change into when you get back into camp each day. It's nice to get out of your clothes and put on totally fresh clothes. So what I do is I have a fleece pant and then I have one base layer um, top that I'm going to sleep in every night. So when I get into camp, I change into these clothes, um, sleep in them, wake up the next morning, they go back into my duffel bag, and then they're basically clean for the next day to put on. So these are gonna go into my duffel bag. Um, for clothes on the trek, pretty minimal. It's only four days, so you don't need a ton of gear, really. Um, we're out in wilderness, it's okay to wear the same clothes every day. So what I bring with me is I have a pair of lightweight trekking shorts, um, so I have one pair of these and then one pair of lightweight trekking pants. Um, trekking pants are essential. They are quick drying. Um, they don't really tend to, to pick up too much odor and things like that. Easy to keep clean. Um, so definitely want to have a, a trekking pant as opposed to kind of a yoga or running pant. Um, these are going to be a better option. So I have just one pair of trekking pants, one pair of shorts, just in case the temperatures do rise. Um, and it's quite warm, you might not want to wear pants. Um, then I have merino wool. So merino wool is definitely what we recommend on the treks. Um, merino wool is naturally antimicrobial, just does not build up bacteria, which means that it doesn't get smelly, um, stays fresher for longer. It also, um, it also keeps you cool when it's warm out and keeps you warm when it's cold out. So it really is um, my favorite material to use in the mountains, and I don't actually do any synthetics anymore. It's all merino wool. So I have just two short sleeve t-shirts that I'll bring with me um, so that I can rotate one day, um, each day. So one day wear one, one day wear the next. That way you can kind of air out and I can put it on the following day. So I have two t-shirts, and then I have one long sleeve merino top. Um, so this one is actually a 200 weight merino wool, um, so it's a good, nice um, weight to wear over one of my t-shirts, and if it starts getting chilly, I can still put my fleece layer on top of it if I need to. So that is it for really my clothing that I'm going to bring on the trip. Then I have, you know, my sports bra, underwear, and a couple of pairs of socks. So the way I like to work, I just would bring two socks that I'm going to trek in. So, you know, wear one one day and then switch over to the next one the next day. And then I have one pair of socks that I put on every night so that they stay relatively clean. I'm not actually trekking in these socks at all. Um, so really three pairs of socks is all you need. Um, and these again are also merino wool. 
um, Smart Wool or Icebreaker. There's a lot of different brands now that you can buy um, that has a great option of merino wool sock. So three pairs of socks, those are going to go in there. Then um, I have a sun hat. It's very important um, to protect your skin from the sun out there. Um, first of all, you dehydrate so much quicker when you're in altitude. So keeping the sun off of your face, keeping, you know, obviously a ton of sunscreen um, is really going to benefit you. So always having a sun hat is super important. Um, and also I have one kind of winter woolly hat as well that I'm going to wear um, if, it if it starts getting cool or cold at night. Um, I always have one woolly hat to wear. Um, then a buff which is one of our favorite bits of gear. Um, a buff is great because if there is dust on the trail, um, higher altitudes, you can pull the buff up over your nose, um, keep in all the moisture, um, and just a great option. So we always carry a buff with us. Um, gloves, again, this is really gonna depend on what time of year you're going. Uh, for when I'm going, I'm gonna just bring kind of a basic liner glove um, super lightweight, just going to keep you warm if it is a little bit chilly out. Um, I'll bring those. And then I'm also going to bring a pair of gloves that is waterproof, just in case. Um, if it is heavy rain and cool, you know, I want to have an option. My hands tend to get quite cold. Um, so for me, it's important to make sure I have enough to keep my hands warm. So there's that. I have a good pair of Category 4 sunglasses to protect me from the sun. So I will have those on at all times, so that'll go in there. Um, a head torch. I will also have spare batteries at nighttime. This is your only source of light really in the tent, um, so really important to have a good headlamp with you uh, with spare batteries as well, just in case. Um, then my water systems. So I will bring super important piece of gear, a camelback or any sort of bladder um, system. So this can actually sit in my backpack and I have the straw that I can be sipping water on throughout the day. So when you're on a trek, it's pretty hard to stop, get your bottle out of your bag, open it up, drink water, put it back. So really the only way to make sure you're keeping hydrated is by using a Camelback. So we definitely recommend that everybody brings one of these with them on the trip. So that'll be in my backpack every day filled with water. We generally recommend everyone drinking about four liters of water a day on the hike. Um, when you go up to altitude, like I said before, you're dehydrating much quicker. You're also exerting energy, so you need to keep yourself hydrate, hydrated. So we will recommend four liters a day. Um, I will also bring an Nalgene bottle with me. Um, like I said before, I won't necessarily be drinking this throughout the day. Um, this will be more when I'm in camp in the morning. Um, as well as in the evening. And then at nighttime, great little trick, especially if it's cold out, um, I will all have our, um, our staff fill this with boiling water and then slip it into my sleeping bag and it'll be my hot water bottle to keep me warm at night. Then that water has been um, boiled, so you'll be able to drink it the next day um, and it is safe to drink. So I'll throw that in my bag as well. Then I'm gonna have my cosmetic bag with my you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, baby wipes to keep clean, um, sunscreen, hand sanitizer, and I'm also going to have a, um, a uh, sorry, water purification tablets with me because all of the cold water that I drink needs to be purified. Um, and then I'm also going to have my medical supplies in here as well. Um, medical kits, Generally, you know, basic things um, are going to be in my backpack with me each day. But this actually has a pretty comprehensive kit of, um, of medical supplies in it. So that's going to go in there as well. Then I have, finally, my trekking pole. Um, I personally only like to use one. Most people like to use two. Um, that is totally fine. So, you know, I would bring both of my trekking poles with me. There is a lot of steps up and down on the Inca Trail. Um, especially on the way down, I find that having one or two trekking poles is absolutely essential. Um, the knees definitely start feeling it after a while, so trekking poles just help to take some of that pressure off. So definitely recommended to bring one of those. So that's going to be trekking with me each day. So I would say that my bag here is probably about 7 to 8 kilos, maybe not even that. Um, so, you know, I definitely won't be hitting that 10 kilo mark, but it's always good to be a little bit less rather than over. 
Um, but this is really everything that you're going to need for your Inca Trail, uh, four day Inca Trail trip. We have a wealth of information on our website, www.iantaylortrekking.com. We have videos, um, we have a blog with tons of information on it, um, and we're happy to, to um, answer any questions that you have. So feel free to give us a call or get in touch on email, um, info at iantaylortrekking.com, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Best of luck on your Inca Trail trip.